this is the function of oxygen oxygen is required not to make water at cytochrome oxidase as is currently believed in mitochondrial physiology completely new radical idea so that's what global concept does and another enzyme that i will use to explain murzine concept is the lactate dehydrogenase lactate dehydrogenase Yes, that's a very bad one. Please can you switch the other one, please? Yeah, so this lactate, when you have uh, anaerobic conditions, your muscles by exertion, they produce lactate. Now it has to go to the liver to get converted back to pyruvate. Classical biochemistry means that it's a perfectly reversible enzyme. If you see the equation, Equation it has a yield of minus 476 kilojoules per mole. So this reaction is not, it's highly going to be towards lactate. So my theory explains why it has to go to liver. Liver has high amounts of cytochrome B450s, the reddish brown color that comes there is because of that. So there, along with oxygen, the reverse reaction occurs. So this is a classical example where you have two single enzyme systems working as murzines and Burgor concept help explaining either two unexplained phenomena. Why does the muscle has four times higher lactate dehydrogenase than the liver? Why should lactate go to the liver? That was not contemporarily explainable in the current theory. Now why is hemoglobin back? How does hemoglobin uh, help? Uh, RBC sustain that also is essential. So there are single enzymes. Now I am coming to the drug metabolizing enzymes in our liver. You know xenobiotics, pesticides, drugs, anything that you consume, they get converted by the liver microsomal cytochrome B450, the reddish brown pigment that is just like a green enzyme, but only that it's deep eye. So it's a multi-protein system. Unlike the lactate dehydrogenase system, this is a multi-protein system. It requires cytochrome B450 reductase, which is a flavor enzyme, cytochrome B450, molecular oxygen, NADPH, and a wide variety of substrates. The drug molecule is a trillion dollar industry. Alright? So now, and cytochrome B5 is another protein that is involved. So all these proteins are working in tandem to metabolize the diverse uh, drugs that go into our body. Now, the classical model is based in the fissure Marshland model that is substrate by the active site and then reductase comes and pumps electrons through protein-protein molecular interaction. This is the classical theory. Goldberg theory, Goldberg model is reductase activates oxygen gives superoxide which is used by the heme enzyme to metabolize the diverse xenobiotics. It's a radically different perspective. Now, how do I support my theory? There are hundreds almost of cytochrome B450s. All cytochrome B450s have a proximal heme violated line, very reducible, completely accessible to the uh, solvent. All right? And you can see that there are hydrophobic uh, helices on the various C5 designs, but their active site channels are guarded by different kinds of amino acids. So you cannot have activation by simple processes that you would imagine in the Marshall methods. So here what you see is this uh, uh, shows support for the Murgoan model. And here, which metabolizes 80% of the drugs that you consume. It has got a uh, protein structure like this. The heme center is the active cell. All the other substrates are supposed to enter this active cell. You can see the channels are very small. It cannot. How does it metabolize? The diverse topographical drugs can find in different positions and when the reactive species comes out, they can metabolize support. Here you see product binds on the surface and you can see when it comes out it binds exactly like what hemoglobin does 
to make it to make it so here you see these are the diverse molecular topographies of the drugs uh, that are metabolized by what cytochrome p450 cyp2 c9 you see how can all these different types of molecules be metabolized by a single isomer my theory explains where the classical theory fails and so here you are i have put in my previous pharmacology paper my people rational here leading uh, uh, candidates for drug manufacture they need to go through optimizations and you have to understand drug drug interactions uh, how does one drug interact with another so all these things can be explained only in the new theory all right so here here we show that uh, how can one cytochrome p450 reductase interact with diverse uh, cis and pump element there is no need there is one intermediate that is superoxide that yes so no, uh, we have 20 so uh, yeah so there are lots of similarities now the next system that i am coming to is the mitochondrial system mitochondrial system is about metabolizing uh, uh, the getting ATP right so it also has exactly the same components as the uh, uh, endoplasmic reticular system so the classical theory has membrane and you have complexes they compound protons this is uh, the nobel prize recognized uh, uh, presentation i mean uh, uh, work of and then when the protons come back to uh, complex five it makes it this is the paul wires uh, model for uh, global okay and it is something like a dam you know so there there are different explanations for uh, it atp synthesis different explanation for nadh oxidation and dmp transmembrane potential is somehow supposed to make atp Okay, so this is a irreducibly complex explanation where multiple proteins have to come together, and it is a non-evolvable gamete logic. That is, I have to pump proton out, and a protein cannot work independently. So they have to somehow have complex things coming together. And here, this view considers no other role for oxygen other than binding the complex home and making water. Okay. It is that. Now, the most important question that anybody could have asked before I did is this: protons are supposed to be from now complex system per mitochondria, ten to the power five, approximately ten thousand to a lakh. Now, conservative proton requirement would be ten to the power six in mitochondria. Now. If you take the volume of mitochondria, if you take the hydrogen ion concentration, if you take Avogadro's number, multiply them, you see a simple thing that protons are single complement in mitochondria. That is mitochondria practically a protein. Okay. So what does it make? It makes this system completely whatever you are being taught in textbooks absolutely redundant. Two nobles absolutely gone down the drain. All right. This is something nobody can question. 80 kilojoules per mole is required to break water. It doesn't come free. Okay. So now, if the, then there are multiple questions like if coenzyme Q is supposed to be an electron transfer agent, you would expect the smaller coenzyme Q to be preponderant. But you have coenzyme Q10, the larger isoprenoid, which cannot move. That is for um, then oxygen. Oxygen is a freely moving uh, molecule, which is supposed to. Uh, it is a dielectric. It can easily get electron, and that reaction is minus two seventy five kilojoules per mole. The equilibrium constant is highly towards the right. So, multiple questions, challenge, reversibility. The classical model says. Complex five is an when it is isolated, it's an ATP base. The textbook Leninger says the binding energy of ATP is used to uh, uh, convert the uh, ATP in 
into it. No, it is higher CP from ATP. How can it do that? So things like that. Several questions. So Moonbound model is a very simple model where the, the redox centers all the complex one, two, three, four. They start from oxygen. They may cross, and the matrix excluded uh, active sites or the binding uh, sites by ADP enabling the presentation of substrate. So it's a stochastic process where the useful reactive species help ADP synthesis. Here the transmembrane potential results due to the reactive oxygen species accumulation in the minor particle. Alright, so that is the model. Now here is the simple in complex one. You see the classical model the electrons are supposed to move here, protons are supposed to get one through this. There is no connection here, there is no physical connectivity. This is a microscopic process, this is a millisecond process, there is no logic. The overall equation is thermodynamically not designed. The structure supports the movement model where the drug samples are not present according to drug potentials, they are deliberately present to make reactive oxygen species and uh, the very binding sites are there to enhance. So my model you see is highly facile. It's all biomolecular reaction. Each each protein can work independently and it's an evolutionary facile system. Complex 3 you see, there is no role for this particular protein part at all in the classical system. The new model has this as ADP binding size. So now other here you see the transmembrane potential is directly correlated to reactive oxygen species. Without reactive oxygen species, there is no ADP synthesis. Very clearly, you can see that if you give NADH and O2 more, you have more ROS. So, ROS currently in biomedical research is seen as an agent for uh, aging, diseases, cancer, all that. My work has shown that it is a skewed perspective. It has sense. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde made a first one. There is a good aspect of it, there is a bad aspect of it. So, I showed that if you take ADP and phosphate, just add superoxide into it, you get ATP. You get ATP. You don't need uh, uh, anything other than that. It's a very facile thing. And before me, in 1980, Kathleen Mailer, she showed that you just add uh, uh, xanthine oxidase and xanthine, you get increased ATP. So that means that xanthine oxidase and xanthine are more to give sucrose. So this is the reason why earlier people tried to uh, please just three, two, three. Uh, so this is the simplest uh, uh, reason why my theory explains the uh, uh, why cyanide, the global toxin principle works within seconds. Here you see cyanide binds to, some of the classical theory says cyanide binds to heat at the cycle of oxidase and prevents oxygen utilization. In my theory, the reactive oxygen species interacts with cyanide. Cyanide works as a catalyst. If you see the total amount of heat, the amount of uh, cyanide that is required to bring any significant dose compared competitive inhibition, it needs grams per kg, but cyanide is toxic in milligrams per kg. Uh, kg. That is why you know that. And if you see, the carbon monoxide binding is much more toxic. Carbon monoxide is an infinite, the binding constants are here, equilibrium constants are here. Carbon monoxide binds at a much greater affinity, but carbon monoxide does not kill even after 40%. Alright, cyanide kills at 2%. So, that concludes the respiration part. I will quickly go over the vision part. Just the vision. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mean no, no, it started at uh, 10, uh, 11. 10, 11. Yeah, the period of conference. I will finish. So, here is I, the way you see me. How do you see me? The classical theory says that rods and bones located at the distant part of the eye, they are the single fundamental units of vision. Now, this is approximately, retina is approximately 400 micron thick. If a photon of 400 nanometer has to go through this, it has to travel.
traverse a thousand times its wavelength. By that time, all kinds of hot scattering, all that will happen. This is a flawed thing that people have accepted. So this cannot be the rod. In my theory, it doesn't happen there. Here, uh, uh, so uh, here what I show is that here the retina gets activated to make superoxide, which attacks GDP to make GDP. And the beta transcription this did not have any role in the classical thing, it is explained. Nerves are now to be understood as electron transfers along the axon. And it's a completely new theory, it's not iron pumping. So, like that, sodium potassium pump, three sodium pump, pump, pumped outside, two potassium taken inside. Um, an enzyme, it violates classical thermodynamics law. An enzyme can only usher in equilibrium, it cannot change equilibrium position. What Dr. Dhanabhalan said, people have not really been cognizant of the different foundations. So these theories clearly show. Very clearly you can see, potassium phosphate is more soluble than potassium chloride. So phosphate, the respiratory ions are present in the cell. They allow more potassium to be inside. So like that, sodium potassium pump. You see, sodium potassium pump is a redox enzyme because it is getting affected by so many diverse redox agents. So it explains how lithium works, all that. So yeah, we have shown transmembrane potential getting affected by oxygen. So in total, this is the last slide. What it does, one more concept gives a new completely idea of understanding cellular biology. That is, enzymes from a molecular level, they can affect interactive equilibrium in the solid, they can act this, and then they can give macroscopic effect that uh, you know, enables spontaneous moving of homeostasis and coherence connectivity of different parts. So I say that along with cell theory and central dogma, movement concept should be seen as a fundamental principle of life. So these are my collaborators, uh, Dr. Bari, Dr. Kamalawa, Dr. Dr. Jaiken, Dr. Wu, and this is my mentor. These are my students. So one must see oxygen not for its stable role at active site. Oxygen is something that uh, is electrifying our system. It connects different aspects. That's why within minutes, if we don't have it, that's why we die. The classical example, uh, things cannot explain. So these things can also give an understanding of the parallel systems of medicine, like Ayurveda. Chara Pashtra Pratik Kajara Chura Anubarini. Adi Yip Kherila. There are minute doses with Sadhana Thermogenesis is the ability. And then the Parai Ayurveda is the explanation. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So basically, these are the number of ideas that have been rendered in Kherila. The all things started in 1930, Archibald in Nobel Laureate. What he said is, cell internal cytoplasm is just a liquid like outside me. It is not. You can easily discern that it's a colloid. Up colloid atlaam in the past of the day, number of colloid atlaam in the past of the day, number of colloid atlaam in the past of the day. That's the reason why we have so many false ideas prevalent. These ideas are fundamental. Only the entire character is here in the future. This is what it leads to. This is why we have come. This is the whole thing. I want it, whatever is written in red, I wanted it is true. For example, the flagella, arterial flagella, it is supposed to go rotate. It's a completely anti-evolutionary theory. I have shown that it is not rotating. For example, the arterial flagella is only 2 nanometers. The wavelength of light that you use to visualize is 200 to 400 nanometers. There is no resolution. Because this spiral movement, like what comes out of the base of the flagella, it basically does a twirling movement. So, like a kite, you know, kite is stabilized by a long tail. That's what is happening. So, complete parallel system. Alright? So, whenever you see. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, organizers. Whenever you see these ideas, sodium potassium from procreative phase, uh, electron transport chain, flagella water, completely reversible enzymes, question these ideas. Alright? I hope my work reaches out. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thank you for a lot of uh, insights. Thank you very much for your time. So, probably, if I start asking questions, I think it's not going to stop. Oh, thank you.